In this tutorial, we're going to take a more detailed look at using LFOs to modulate parameters in particle. And particularly, we're going to look at beat sync LFOs. So I'm going to take a uh, preset voice out of the Bell Metal Arps pack, which is basically a uh, simple hi-hat triplets. So let's just kick that off. At... Um, a reasonable tempo, but nothing too fast, so we can hear what's going on. And that's the basic preset. If we go and have a look at it in the particle editor, you can see that basically it's just one instance of the drum synth and some equalisation. What I'm going to do is put a filter in front of this. And there you go, it's going in auto sweep mode. I'll turn the sweep off. What I want to do is I want to substitute that sweep, which is automatic, for one that's synchronized to the BPM of the mix. Uh, I just need to have a play around with the filter here to get the settings right. Uh, I want it in bandpass mode. Uh, I think it needs to be a bit tighter, so we'll change the quality. And essentially what it is, is this kind of sound. But I want to automate that. I think the filter's probably attenuating things a bit too much, so I might need to just add an amplifier at the end here, just to uh, lift the overall output. Yeah, that's better. Okay, let's just add a control LFO. And hook it up to the uh, filter cutoff. Now we can have this LFO just running free using the frequency knob at the top, which is pretty much the same sort of effect as the auto sweep on the filter. Except here we can change the wave shapes because all the different wave shapes are available. You can also adjust the positive and negative depths of the LFO with the minimum and maximum slider. But if you go to the away from the default list, you get into what's basically a clock divider list. And now you can see that the frequency of the LFO is matching the BPM of the mix. If I divide it down to something slower, we've got now a sweep over a four bars. Probably need to amplify this a bit. So, as before, we'll just um, reroute this through the amp so we can hear the range a bit better. There we go. And as you can hear, I'm using a left sawtooth wave on the LFO which has quite a sharp cutoff at the end, which is probably going to start clicking fairly soon. There we go. So it may be that we need to change to a more um, rounded wave shape, like a triangle. That gets rid of that sudden change at the end of the uh, sawtooth wave. And that's basically it. If we go back to the mix, we can put this with another patch from the Bells pack, which is just a four on the floor, flat beat, 
and you can hear how it synchronizes. So that's the basic principle of how to synchronize LFOs to the beat. Very simple example, but we can do something a bit more complicated and maybe more interesting. So I'll just mute these for the moment. And then we'll go into the nautical seed pack. And pull out our usual pattern type voice. And I'll just edit the parameters to give us a, uh, a root note for crotchet phrase. So there we go. Fairly familiar. And as before, I'll go into the sounds and just load up the double oscillator synth that we've already had defined. I'll just fatten this up before we start. And I'm going to add an overdrive in front of the filter just to uh, boost things a bit. That's better. Right. Again, we could do the same thing with this filter and with an LFO. But I want to show you some of the uh, more creative things you can do. As before, we hook it to the cutoff. Switch to band pass and just tweak these settings a bit. I'm going to need to put some of the dry signal back here. And that's a kind of starting point sound. Again, I think I'm going to need to amplify this because the filter does attenuate. Then letting the, the LFO free run gives a sort of wah wah effect, which is fine. And as before, we can sync this. If we change it to a square wave and now change it to random levels, as you can hear, that's exactly what you get. However, my favourite wave is the STS wave. If we adjust it to fully square and take the slope away, then you've got a square wave. But this parameter modulates the pulse width. So now, if you can hear, the modulation is offset off the beat. Back to 50%. And this is quite useful because what we can do is we can actually use two LFOs and mix them together to make a kind of synchronised modulation. And to do that, I'm going to need to add a junction. I'll just route the filter cut off to this rather than the LFO. Now I'm going to add a second LFO. Put it into the junction. And set this to a different clock division. Let's change the width. 
There you go. You see, different divisions give different effects. But for our purposes, I think 2 over 4 is um, good enough. And there we have a kind of syncopated modulated bass. not all we can do. Let me show you something in uh, Nautical that can make this a lot more interesting. If we go back to the, uh, the Drill Down Nautical editor, actually I just want to set this to a minor scale rule in the cell first. Now if we go back into the Drill Down, first thing I'll do is just add some variations of the patterns. So let's have um, a pattern of minor thirds. And uh, fourths. And uh, let's put a seventh in there as well, a minor seventh. Uh, and let's make that a little less frequent than uh, the other patterns, so maybe 20% weight. Okay. Now let me show you the articulation parameter, because this has quite an interesting effect. As you can see, articulation is 100% at the moment, which means that everything's played legato. But if you reduce this, things become increasingly more staccato. And the other thing we can do is put a range on this, so it's um, a bit more uh, human, less robotic. And now as we're really playing with cliches, let's go into the chords. Set a chord depth of 2. And let's change the strategy to semitone shift. And let's have the shift interval as an octave. Now let's set the delay. And we'll set the delays to quantized beats. And now we'll actually set the delay for that second note to 30, which is uh, an eighth note. If the slide is not accurate enough, you can enter it by text like this. And there we've got a cheesy octave bass. If we uh, stop the mix now, we'll just take the BPM up to something a bit more uh, 
interesting. And put them all together and see how it holds up. It's like the eighties never went away. As before, if you follow the link on the sidebar, you can access the source file for this tutorial and uh, play about with it for yourself.